long ago in a living room very much like yours. Two women made up a podcast on how movies link up to each other, and they called it Six Degrees of Feature Film. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Six Degrees of Feature Film podcast. I am Brienne, also known as Miss Movies. I'm Stacey Howard. I did it correctly this time, although we won't really know that I did it incorrectly till next week. So right. here we go. Yay! Yay! In the Yay, future. Podcasting. Today we are excited because we have a special guest, and that is the one and only from Monday Night Raw, Nick Monday. Yay! Hi, Thanks for Nick. having me. I'm also known as Miss Movies. Are so you? This, so this is weird. So. Oh my gosh. You there is another name. person that goes by Miss Movies really? on YouTube, and I'm like, wait a minute. But yeah. then at the same time, I'm like, ah, whatever. Just be yourself. Yeah. You're, you're, I should just be Brienne. Brienne. You're Brienne. That's just who yeah. I am. I'm a little too old to be doing that anymore. Yeah, I started I, that when I was in my 20s. Really? So. Okay. I'm Franklin Gutierrez. We're all being ourselves. So. <laughs> Screw you, Nick Mundy. Ah, so we just saw Star Wars. Holy hell. Guys. We did. Whoa. Or. Or we're pretending to on this shit, guys. podcast. <laughs> this that, is be we're record this. This comes out after Star after Wars. After Star Wars, like yeah. the day after. All right, let's do our predictions. Okay. okay, prediction. Okay, you first, Stacey. Um, Sorry, I'm taking over. That's fine. Lightsabers. <laughs> okay. Lightsabers. That's what I predict. You predict and Adam that. Driver is gonna be weird and gothic and intimidating, kind of sexy, like a dark, sexy bird. That's what I predict. Dark, That's sexy bird. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetness. I don't think it's gonna open. With the stormtrooper popping up, that's the one thing I think. Like, I don't think it's going to be any sort of cold open like that. Okay. We're gonna, obviously, we're going to have the scroll. Well, I haven't seen the trailer, so you're spoiling okay. everything. Oh, from... oh, sorry. That's yeah. it. We're done. No, no <laughs> wait. The trailers uh, reveal nothing really. Well, yeah. I, I still have it because I think BB-8 is going to be my favorite thing ever. Okay, that's what I'm, I'm predicting. The kid, have you got those Christmas presents yet? No, but my kids are more into uh, some other programming on Disney Junior right now. Nerds. They like they like Star Wars though. They both fight over who gets to be Darth Vader. And for a long time, my my son would say, "Darth Vader is a lizard. He's a lizard." And I was like, "What are you? Maybe how is he a lizard?" And then I figured it out. He's a wizard. Oh. And I was like, "Oh, you're right." And how do you know that word wizard? Like, how are you, what an idiot! How are you he figuring is. this no. out? Your children sound like dummies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just oh, cool! We could be being a, uh, children on this. Yay, children bashing! That's also a, like a sub podcast of this. Stacy's just mean to children. <laughs> Every day, though. Stacy's ch- scared of motherhood, and then she'll take it out <laughs> on Brand's children. There you go. That's Volume true. three. No, um, <laughs> I hope it's good. It's like it's like most J.J. Abrams movies. You walk out like, hey, that was great, and then you slowly realize all the issues with that movie. Sure. Lens flare glow. All the fla- I yeah. can't I, see. Right, I'm blind in my left eye. You know, I bet J.J. Abrams is going to be like, you know what? You guys are dicks. You don't get any <laughs> lens flares, you piece of shit. And you're like, could he use a lens flare? I can't wait till it comes out and then he's like, why don't you try to direct a Star Wars film? Ugh. He's right, though. He's right. You know, like, I, I get bored with, like, the same joke narrative. Yes. Of, like, too many lens flares. I'm like, shut up. That was a good movie. That was, that I was liked a great it. movie. Yeah, and then, really pe- Star yeah. Mm-hmm. You assholes. It's going to be great. I'm super pumped about it. So. Yeah, it's, well, it's Star Wars. I mean, like, look. Star Wars. I was destroyed Star by the Star last Wars. the last ones. Right, of course. Now yeah. you know what? Kids actually like the last ones. So it's well, really your kids hard. are stupid. Well, my kids haven't. We've seen already it. established. Wait, 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 we've wait, already wait, established wait, children wait. are stupid. Yeah. My husband has this theory that if the prequels were your first movies of Star Wars, you like them. Well, that's why we need to teach people that nostalgia is bullshit. Sure. It, it, it's it, they're wrong. They're bad. <laughs> they're they're inherently bad movies, and like. You need to, like, if my kid, like, my dad would, like, hey, I'm watching this, like, Never Ending Story 2, because uh-huh. it's, like, Never Ending Story, and I was nine. I was like, hey, this is neat. With right? Jonathan yeah. Brandis? Yeah, and my dad was like, no, this is a bullshit movie. This movie sucks. Yes. Kind of like me and my daughter for Parent Trap 2. Yeah. I, I mean, as handsome as Tom Welling is. I was like, nope, nope. we've got to go back to the first one. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's begin when again. Tom Welling's your third lead. Not a good movie it is. <laughs> Tom Welling. I like that guy, actually. I like Tom but... Welling, too. I, Poor poor Tom Welling. <laughs> poor Tom Welling? Poor Tom, insanely rich like... Tom Welling. Yep. Just going off the rails with this. Hey, I want to know, um, before we get started with our feature film, which yes. we'll get into soon, um, tell us about Monday Night Raw. Yeah, well, we are currently in six weeks in, or yes. six or seven weeks into the show, and it's either going really well or I'm fired, <laughs> uh, depending on when you're listening to this. Okay. Uh, I think both options are really, 
really high. I don't no. think they could fire you at any uh, point. In time. Like, I just don't think they could. I hope they we'll don't see. because they got the rock to be the officiant at yeah. your wedding. So I think that they're not. Yeah, they like you. they kind of like me. Uh, no, just a it's, little bit. it's a it's a live talk show for the Screen Junkies Plus Network. It's okay. it's really silly. Um, if you want hard hitting movie insight, <laughs> it's not going to be. Well, Dan's they, there. Yeah. Dan will get you. Yeah, Dan has Stockholm go. syndrome at this point. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna call in. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then no. I'm just gonna show up. One yeah, day. well, like we, we, we I'll it, show up with cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know we have a band. It's fu- it's fun. It's we're just trying to do a comedy show. That's really what it right. is. It's there's so many movie shows and they're all great or not, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I just wanted to be fun, like just fun and silly. And it's like, if you like the silly crap I do, come you, over. You'll, you'll you'll hang out. It'll be right. fun. It's a half an hour of your day on a Monday. I so, like it. Just Monday a half an hour. Long. That's it. Well, it could go long. We I okay. want to do. We or I've done or we're about to do a diehard Christmas party that's going to be three hours long where people will just come in. <laughs> Amazing. Friends of the Amazing. show come in dressed like their diehard characters. We'll get oh, drunk. We're, we'll yeah. crash you that have your sweatshirt. Sure. I have, I do. All right. I do. Yeah, this I'm, is fun. It's like if you, um, if I'll you, put glass on my feet. You yeah. Know. If you like, if you like silly crap, you'll love the show. Fantastic. So. Yay! I love silly crap. Yeah. So, Stacy, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Stacy, can you tell us how the show works? Okay, so the show works like this: we pick a feature film. Is that a chart? It's a chart. Yes, I make charts, and okay. I'm very organized. Okay. Um, <laughs> we have a feature film. From there, we show how six other movies link up to it. So it's kind of like a backwards six degrees of Kevin Bacon game. Yeah, okay. the reverse all, bracket. Reverse bracket. That's what I. I don't know a lot about brackets. It's more. Well, like you a made a bracket. Thing. That's what the chart I, is. Oh, is this what this that's is? That's a bracket. Oh shit. Or a pyramid. That's okay. what that. That's what that. Um, computer science. Class computer you, science. That you had thing. to take mm-hmm. in high school. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Well, it's yeah. It's a reverse bracket. So we're gonna talk about six, seven movies total. Today, but the first one we're talking about is Roadhouse. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! 1989, May 19th. Don't hurt. Yep. My whole philosophy is built on this movie. Is it? Well, the bad guys. Okay. The bad guys' philosophy. Uh, bad guys just driving, to driving, you know. f shit up. Yeah, just basically. driving. No, this movie is driving great. a huge monster truck yeah. around. Yeah. No. Well, if I had henchmen, they would all drive giant monster <laughs> trucks. Um. Well, let's get into the synopsis yeah. for the movie. Okay, okay let's so do it. it's a tough bouncer is hired to tame a dirty bar. That's Stars. all. Just that's one it. sentence. One love sentence. It. That's mm-hmm. all you need. Who gives a shit? It's the '80s. They didn't really have plots. It's amazing what you can do with cocaine <laughs> and the, the film industry in the '80s. It's just, I miss it. You know what the formula was for this movie, though? It's literally you look at the poster for it or the DVD, you it's know, cover or whatever, and he's like leaning against the bar, but it's got. In one poster is, um, hold on, I wrote this down. Oh, it has three pictures. One is he's doing like sweaty karate. Okay. Or tai, chi. tai Chi. The next one is a sex scene, his one with Kelly Lynch, where she's like up against the bricks and yeah. okay. it's like really naughty. And then the third one is the exploding monster truck. Like that's just the photos on, <laughs> right on the poster. That's all you need for an 80s movie. With the neon karate, roadhouse and like. Karate, sex, and explosions. That's it. And a blind yeah. guitar. And a blind. Who yeah. I'm going to try to get on Monday Night Row. Oh, he's dead. Oh, uh, you were, oh. <laughs> no, spoiler alert. Spoiler. Oh. He died. Poor little thing. But he was good in the film. Son of a bitch. I'm sorry. Uh, I know. He was so this good. movie is, yeah. okay, so I think I've seen all these movies that we're going to talk about just because my grandmother, the reason I'm so into like 80s action movies or just because they're the best, but also because my grandmother had HBO. Okay. And she would videotape everything. Nice. So then she had like like it was in running out. Yeah, of just VH like perfectly organized labeled VHSs. My grandma you have a would great do stuff grandma. like that too. Yeah, and then um, she was a, also a terrible babysitter. Okay. And so probably just not put a great grandma. And then she would be like, "Hey, <laughs> you, me and my brother, you dumb bastards, like sit down, shut up, and watch Die Hard or Lethal Weapon or Kickboxer or Roadhouse." So oh, uh, we wow. just watched those a shit ton. Nick Instead Funny, a, shaped by powerful women. Yeah. I just saw That's this movie wonderful. like two weeks ago. Funny. For and the first time. I don't think you can yourself you miss think? movies. <laughs> <laughs> because I miss movies so oh, Okay, okay, that makes sense. See? That makes sense. See, it works a go. few different ways. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. It made $30 million at the box office domestically, I think. So, I mean, yep. it was like a pretty... It and only okay. cost 15 Who so, directed this masterpiece? Rowdy Harrington. God, Who was the stage manager for Growing Pains, guys? What? Stage manager for Growing. He really didn't do much else. Okay. This was it. Okay. Um, 
What a but way to go. It was out. written by David Lee Henry and H- Hillary Henkin, and Hillary Henkin actually also wrote Wag the Dog. So that's kind of an interesting like change. Yeah. Let's go from this. To Not that. really. It's the same movie. <laughs> what the heck is Wag the Dog? <laughs> what? Is this something? Aww. What is this? Oh, where they like make up the news? Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's, oh, great. it's like um, a p- presidential thing. It's a political um, thr- uh, comedy thriller. Oh, okay. Dustin it, but Hoffman is in it. Yes. Robert okay. De Niro's in it. I Kirsten Dunst. Yep. Yeah, it's basically Wag the Dog is something like. They're trying to make a political guy uh, look good. Yeah, like a president ha- will have like a oh. personal issue and then they distract it with like. Like scandal on television. Apparently, like yes. basic, but they're trying to like spin the news, basically. I, okay, I got you. I got you. Because I've seen the other one with Kirsten Dunst, Dick. Have you guys seen I that movie? I did not see that one. Oh, Michelle it's Williams. Her, yeah, Michelle came Williams came out in the summer of '99 of Kirsten Dunst of that and the movie you can't ever find. Bring it on. No, that was 2000. <laughs> um, right. The guys from the state. Uh, did it? It's the one about the pageant. Christy Lee. Oh, oh yeah, oh, we oh, talked about this. Yeah, yeah, you can't find that anywhere. You can't, of all time. I own it. You need to borrow it? Yes. I will give it to you. You can't find, but online, you can't find that movie or True Lies anywhere, like on iTunes. Oh, I oh, like, man. I mean, I pirate it all the time, but I love Drop Dead Gorgeous. I allegedly. Think it's, it's allegedly. I would never pirate. do anything illegal or terrible like that. I would never steal. Um, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so it stars, of course, the Swayze. Swayze. Patrick Swayze. He's yes. our main man today. Main man, main guy. Sam Elliott. Kelly Lynch, and then a bunch of other 80s people that, I don't know. Uh, I don't Terry really Funk, up. the wrestler, okay. live nice. guitarist. Uh, and Kevin Teague, I like him. He's the owner of the bar, oh, and he was yeah. also on Lost. That's right. And then Lost and who plays Wesley? Um, ben Gazzara. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. he was in, in uh, Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh, Johnny Treehorn. Here's okay. the thing about this movie, why it's so great. I like when bad guys have, like, wimp names, like Kevin or Wesley. Okay. Or Calvin, or <laughs> Bryce. Bryce. Bryce is a good one. Or that's a shitty like name. Like what kind of names? Like like wimpy names. Oh, wimpy. Like wussy okay. names. A bunch like of wussy. white guy names. Like like middle mi- class white guy. Yeah. Names. Like Nick. Um, <laughs> sure. No, but yeah. So like that was a that was a good move making stupid Wesley. Uh, this movie's a fantastic movie. What's your favorite scene? Uh, the throat rip. Of throat course. Rip. Throat rip. Um. How is that even possible? Is my question. Uh, I don't know. Like, Me and my brother are obsessed with it and try to <laughs> rip each other's. Uh, the the sex scene's erotic. You uh, know about, sex okay, here's what bugs oh, me gosh. about the sex scene: is that the music to that sex scene is the same music that they use in Dirty Dancing. It is for another sex scene. Really? It's like, and hold it's on, both friends. Crazy. Okay. And Dirty Why Dancing isn't that a came YouTube first. That's sunk up. I, good question. Maybe but, there is one. We should. Yeah. Maybe I, I've never. But those really sex scenes are that. very. Um, Different. Different. Yes. Well, he's got her up against like this rock wall. That and I'm looks like, like that's it hurts. uncomfortable. Well, here's yes. here's Just the as thing. a lady, I'm saying I wouldn't be down for that. Here's the thing about all of these movies that because movies don't have sex scenes anymore, it feels like. Like they don't have Really? I feel like they all do. Well, well they have lots of close ups and like I'm talking about like where it looks like softcore porn, which okay. the roadhouse. Okay. Thing. I'm talking yeah. about like like you'll see some boob, but like I'm talking about like Cinemax style. I feel like you could get that on just regular television now. Yeah, well, true, but like, I just... Well, you just watch Game of Thrones or anything on, like, Showtime. Well, that's I mean. HBO. But if you watch, like, How to Get Away with Murder, holy hell, they've got some sex scenes. I, I like, don't celebrate the ABC yeah. fall lineup as much as you, you do, know, apparently. You know, the problem is, I don't watch is I only have one app. <laughs> it's okay. It's the ABC watch. <laughs> but, like, uh, seriously. No, the, uh, yeah, you, you watch these movies, and, like, if you're an impressionable youth, like I was, uh... It's not how you have sex in any of these like movies where sure. it's just like it's just mostly flexing. <laughs> like, it's just they want sweaty muscles yeah. and a buttocks, yeah. and she's in like her picnic dress, right? Yeah, yeah. she's wearing like she a is. red and white checkered picnic dress. She just took it right a off gang-um. the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a gingham dress. I don't know what that means. That's just a it's pattern. the pattern. Okay. It's the pattern. <laughs> um, We're just schooling you, Nick. But yeah, no, it's like you know uh, Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. That yeah. kind of pattern. It's. You know, here's the thing about this movie, which is interesting. They never explain why he does this. Like, it's this guy who just sure. shows up at a bar to cool it. And well, then, the guy hires him. Kevin Yeah, no, but him, like, but... why he fights Ben Garza and takes it upon oh, right. his mission to blow up this guy's mansion. No Maybe idea. because he knew that that guy was, like, bringing everyone down. Well, it's a samurai movie. It, it feels like an sure. old, like, spaghetti western slash samurai movie where he goes from town to town. Fixing rich guys from messing with bar folk. It's for 
for sure a Western. That's what they said, kind of, was like, it's meant to be a Western, but it's set in, like, modern mm-hmm. times. Can I just ask, I'm so, well, there are lots of things I'm confused about in this movie that make no sense, and it's not really meant to make sense, but this town is tiny. It's like a yes. tiny little town outside of Kansas City or whatever, but they're acting like this bar is this, like, huge bar that's making tons of money, like it's a Manhattan club or something. It can't be making that much money well, you'd to be su- warrant this, like, cooler to come and pay them, like, what's it, like 2000 bucks a night or something, or like 800 a night, something like insane to like clean it up. And then once they do clean it up, it's the du- clean up yeah. the double deuce, they've got like a line out the door. And I'm like, where do these people come from? From like three hours away? Well, you're, you're t- Maybe, because they're looking for town. Dalton. First of all, the guy that owns it was like, came into a lot of money. So I think he's like, oh, I don't have to worry about money. That's why I'll just give this guy 800 or whatever he wants a night because – I just want this bar to be... This is my passion project, right? This bar is my passion par- project. I want it to be cleaned up. Yeah. Like, this guy will do it for me. I have the money now. I'm I mean, just going to do I'm it. I'm just saying, I'm from, you know, a smaller town in Texas. And even mm-hmm. a college town, bars are not that big of a deal. Yeah, well, I'm it's sure. more or less, that place is more or less college station. I mean, I've yeah. gotten thrown out of bars with li- in College Station. For, I know. Uh, lines that oh, far. I know you've been around Northgate. I can, I can tell. Wait, I, can tell. I don't know what that is. Northgate <laughs> is the bar strip oh, yeah, in College that Station. Oh, yeah, um, but I'm just saying, like, this is a, like, you know, it's like yeah. a tiny little baby town in the middle of nowhere, but they're acting like it's this huge club, and there's lines on the door, well, and I'm like, where are all these people coming from? Maybe and where's the fucking cops? Counts? There's murder in this movie, right. and there's he no cops. The cops. They, he does. I know, but you know call who, the sheriff from, like, the next town over. You know who Wesley reminds me of, actually? A Johnny Menzel's dad. A little bit, If you yeah. look like it, look up Johnny Menzel's dad. Mm-hmm. He looks just like Probs. Ben Garza. Probs. Yeah. And the only time the cops do show up is like... Oh, that's Matt Leinert for you. At the end. That's Matt. Oh, Matt Leinert. I'm just giving you guys shit for your I work out at the same gym as him. Really? It's very exciting. Matt Leinert's Twitter (laughs) makes me sad because it's just like, hey, I get to see my son this weekend after not seeing him for the past two weekends. Remember USC? That's sad. (laughs) Remember USC? Remember when I was on top, guys? Yeah, hanging out at Chili's Manhattan Beach. (laughs) This is my kid. Go Trojans. Good time. Chili's is no joke. Uh, he's really sad. <laughs> That's just, unfortunate. Yeah, well, hubris. Um, I'm the podcast runner. That's fine. I should, like, you know, I, I've never done a podcast where, like, oh, this wasn't half an hour longer than every other one. But. Oh, no, this is going to be, like, three hours long. Yeah, fine. We have lots to talk about. In. Can we, we talk about Sam Elliott's half-up, half-down ponytail he does? Well, that's a that's the best version of the man man bun. It is because when shit goes it's down, just, it's the first. The, the hair goes up. Yeah, and he just literally goes like. Well, this he's got to have it out of his eyes. There's no does, way. I, I used I used to have my hair down to my shoulders. I wore the half clip sometimes. Did you really? Yeah. How long did you wear that for? Uh, at parties because I wanted to be Sam Elliott. So, but it was about really? down. My hair was about down to here. To your shoulders. Shoulders. Yeah, uh, as it's an audio format. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 my hair looked <laughs> like, like Roger Barr. No, longer and wider. It looked <laughs> okay, like Gene okay. Simmons is mm-hmm. uh, without makeup, but oh. with more body. Right. So, like, yeah, maybe Paul Stanley's. But, yeah, it was about down to here. It looked terrible. So. I'm going to picture it didn't happen. Uh, I got it somewhere. Get it. <laughs> We're going to get it. We're Just gonna tweet, get it. A little, tweet a uh, photo at me. And right. <laughs> here's, yeah. my Twitter here's me and my shit hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, this movie is great, and it's weird that Lori Petty's not in it. Right. Because it should have been Lori, Lori Petty should be in this movie, in right. a way. Like I mean, she well, shows up. Well, she's in some other Pe- yeah. Swayze films. But yeah, you're, we'll just, you're almost surprised that Laurie Petty's not in this movie. Wasn't what? she supposed to be in it, but then Kelly Lynch got it? Or like, no, I'm not saying there her were definitely to be. some other. I don't like, think she should have been the love interest of this movie. She should have been like the waitress, sassy oh, waitress. Okay. Oh, you know who it was? Annette Bening. <laughs> oh yeah, it was supposed it was to be Annette Bening. What? Yes. And then Kelly Lynch. What? Yeah. Was cast because she was like Kelly Lynch was like on contract with United Artists or something. So then they're like, sorry, Annette Benning, we got to use her. Cause sorry, she's... Annette Benning. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to disparage Ke- Kelly Lynch, but come on, Annette Benning. You have too um, much class for this. I know, I know. Okay, here's what I don't like. Stitching up of uh, any sort of wounds. There was some other movie where someone was stitching up their wounds, and I was like, why am I watching two movies where people are stitching but themselves up? But it's so easy up. based on these movies. Based on the movies. Oh, yeah. And it's so unsterile. There. Like, I know it's the 80s, so maybe yeah. they're, like, not worried about that, but yeah. gross. Take, how, take your scandal. I hate when people do it themselves, and they're not immediately like, ow, 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 ow. Like, I'm just being frightening the whole time, and, like, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. So it's so unrealistic. 
I don't even think I could do it with a doctor doing it. Probably it's weird not. they cut the scene where the guy who got his throat ripped out um, was sewing his throat back. <laughs> Sitting there silently. I, 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 appreciate <laughs> I appreciate this movie because the bad guy or the second bad guy who's always sexier and more dangerous than the original bad guy okay. in yeah. these movies. He has the tighter jeans and he looks like Latino Patrick Swayze. Ooh, that uh, sounds nice. Well, he's, he's in the movie. And then yeah. <laughs> he shows his strength and dexterity through using a pool cue as a bow staff, which I'm just mm-hmm. like, this is fun. <laughs> I love that though. I love those moments. What was the moment where you were like, "Oh man, this is insane!" Like this is an insane movie. I right? never did. I mean, when, well, you like, saw it so young. When he's like, "Hey, you want like the boyfriend of some girl was like paying someone, right? To having touch... a guy pay to touch her boobs or whatever." And I was like, right. "This would yes." Ha-. And she's I totally think that was my moment too. It, and I'm like, "What?" Oh yeah, I didn't like the the the, the blonde girl who was. The, she dances on yeah, the that was Oh, yeah, and, like, the, it's a strip tease, and, like, everyone's cool with it, like, or, like, a, cheering. I'm like, this is, no, this, this is This isn't happen. empowering. Yeah. <laughs> Not <laughs> empowering to anyone. Yeah. There's, yes, what is the This point? isn't a feminist moment. No. But it was the 80s. There was no such thing as feminist. Did you know that they show a scene of this movie in training for police officers in NYPD? The be nice scene. Like when he's talking to everyone at the very beginning when he they comes should, to the bar. They yes. should probably watch it more. They probably should. Certain Props. areas, definitely. Yeah. For yes. sure. Let's be nice. If somebody gets in your face and calls you a cocksucker, I want you to be nice. Be nice. I, guess. Just, I can't believe you just said cocksucker. Oh I know. my god, I've it's never heard you crazy. say dirty words. I really it like was it. But she a was quote reading. from a movie. Yeah. So it doesn't count, She doesn't count, have right? any paper in front of her. She's just Does saying Does Patrick Swayze say like bad it. words in the movie? Does he talk in the movie? Sucker. Does he talk in the movie? No. He just, <laughs> Does he, or just rides right. as he like stands. an ethereal angel sent from above. With his hair blowing, the mullet blowing in the wind. He, okay, guys, I gotta, I gotta talk about the end like fight sequence yeah. for a second. As soon as they got in the house and I saw the coffee table, I was like, someone's going through that coffee table. Like, did you all feel yeah, that Yeah, it was moment? the big guy. Like, it was, I yeah. know it. Someone's they going through glass that. Coffee table no, and go. also, it's it, you can tell who's always going to die and like... Second bad guy is always going to die. Bad guy's going to live, but get the shit kicked out of him. Um, or have a bear fall great. on him. Yeah, like, I didn't see mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. Polar bear <laughs> fell on me. And then all the other guys were like, this guy's <laughs> cool. Just kill people. <laughs> Let's go take our business and take over his lead. And then Again, no cops. Yeah. I mean, there's cops no one's in the gonna end, investigate. but like, no one investigates anything. Nothing happens. Nothing is solved. But it's Patrick's Wesley thing. Wesley had so. them paid off. I know, but just call the one from the next town. I'm just saying. I think I'm dressed right. like Oh, wait, 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 wait. You are. I have another thing that I need to tell you all. What? This what, what, movie what? is the first movie to be given the Riff Tracks treatment by Michael J. Nielsen and recorded downloadable hum- humorous commentary in the vein of Mas- Mystery Science Theater 3000. I need to listen to that because they do a few other movies like The Room and stuff, Sorry, right? Sorry, it's all right. Um, um, possibly. Possibly. That sounds fun. Riff tracks. We should do our own commentary riff tracks. I think people, Shouldn't I think it? there needs, the world needs more white people riffing on movies. <laughs> sure. We definitely yeah. don't have enough of no. that. For sure don't have enough. Definitely men. Yeah, Just, just men. Specifically just men. bearded, no women. out of shape men. There are some podcasts where sometimes I'll hear a, a female voice, like on movie podcasts. What the hell is that? that? To, and I'm like, I didn't know they allowed women <laughs> yeah, to be on this show. <laughs> what? Women watch movies. Wait a minute. They don't have just love actually on a loop. <laughs> so confused. Guys, Roadhouse is amazing. Yes. Yeah. Let's is. move it on though. Let's move it on. I think I will break a stereotype when we get to Do another it. movie. Oh, I'm so, excited. Yeah. Okay. Do it, please. Okay. Second film, Stacy. Okay, let's so take it. off of Roadhouse, we're doing Patrick Swayze movies. Yes. So our first one, should we give it to the guest or should we take it? Or like, I don't have your do I don't have your PowerPoint partner? presentation that you're looking. Well, okay. we can hand it over to you. So there's two okay. movies we're going to talk about. Let's talk about Point Break. Point Break. 1991, just a few years after yeah. the Roadhouse, July 12, an FBI agent goes undercover to catch a bank of robber a bank of robbers because that's how I say things a gang of okay. bank robbers who a gaggle of surfers. thief men. <laughs> a gaggle of thief men. Starring Keanu Reeves as Johnny Utah, Patrick Swayze as Bodie, Gary Busey as Pappas, Lori Petty as Tyler, and John C. McGinley as Ben Harp. Obviously, there's plenty of other people in this film as well. Yeah, see, you didn't specifically, like, you need to be specific. This is the introduction of crazy Gary Busey. Yes. Like, oh, he was sad. A, he was a human being before this movie. 
All right. So you love Gary Busey. Yeah, as, Stacey as, is as we Gary. all know, <laughs> Who loves as we Gary all know, Busey. Gary Busey is my spirit animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's also from Texas. He's also insane and loud, and I connect with him on a, a spiritual level. Mm-hmm. So I just really love him. And you tweet at him all the time. I tweet at him all the time. He's never responded. Uh, him um, and Larry I'm not King. There. Him well, and those oh, no, two. <laughs> Larry King responds to <laughs> he me. He does. Though. Larry King. Oh, Larry King wants you to be his wife. Yes. He does. You're next. Once the <laughs> other one dies, I'm in there. And I'm getting all the gold. And I'm excited. Uh, he's probably worth seven grand. Uh, <laughs> no, Larry, no. Like, let's let's uh, talk about that for a minute. Larry King, I tweeted at him, do you want to go get Manny Petties? And he was like, sorry, young lady, trying to wait out a snowstorm. Thank you, though. And I was like, we're married. That's We're married <laughs> legally, right? That's totally what it is. Oh, Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Anyway, okay, sorry. Back to Point Break. Okay. Clear, clearly, I should mock you for your fan obsession. No, uh, no, yeah. never. Says the guy whose career is based on. Um, fan obsessions. Fan obsessions. Uh, no, uh, this movie, I, me and my rugby team that I played with in college, all we did was talking Gary Busey quotes from this movie. So that's fun. Um, this movie's great. It's the kind of like the the parental figure to the Fast and the Furious franchise, which then yes. spin off. Spin off. Uh, oh, guys, when this comes out, the new one will have been released or has been released this Wait, week. Wait, I thought but it was no, next year. No, let's oh, not, we're not, I thought it was next year. No one's seen that movie. I think it's this year. No, it's this year. It's it's like right after Star Wars. So it's going to make $7. Oh, God. And we will never, <laughs> we will forget that. We don't need to talk about that. I anymore. saw someone who like photoshopped the poster of it to have him have a meatball sub in his hand. Oh, shit. Yeah. And I thought, that's going to be so much better. Why didn't they just do that? You like, know hey, this guy's an extreme <laughs> sports athlete just like me. Oh, God, the line from the trailer. I believe that these criminals, like me, are extreme mm-hmm. athletes, or whatever he says. This was Keanu's first role, like his first role as the, like a dramatic lead, right? Maybe we can look it up. No, I believe it was because there was the Parenthood, there was Bill and Ted, and mm-hmm. I think it was this is his drama. This, and I'm a huge Keanu Reeves fan. I think he's fantastic in this. I mean, oh. he's ridiculous, but he's fantastic. Right. Well, he buys it. Like the thing about Keanu, and I admire, he buys into everything he's doing. Yeah. Like I wanted him to be Doctor Strange. Ooh, that would have been mm. fun. Um, that would be good. Yeah, instead they have... Who do they have? Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh-huh. But... Well, Keanu's getting up there in years, though. Yeah, I mean, so not that you couldn't do it. Ageist? Yeah, I am an ageist and ageist. a sexist, obviously. I want uh, women in everything. Well, <laughs> He's still gorgeous, though. He still looks good. Yeah. You see him in John Wick? He's a fucking badass. I know. John Wick 2 is coming out. Oh, I'm so pumped. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. This movie. This movie's great because it's... It's the most philosophy in an action movie. Well, pre before like the Matrix Two, which was just shoved down our face with the no, bullshit oh philosophy. That was so terrible. Uh, but anonymous soliloquies or whatever the guys talking. Yeah, they about. were just they built characters based on bullshit philosophy. No, um, this movie is great. I think it's like a little deeper and weirder, and I it, it makes no sense again. Mm-hmm. Like. But it does because it's just simple, and as a writer, I appreciate that. Like, it's just simple. It's these guys need money. They rob banks. They got off on it, and they do it, and then they they, uh, and then and they uh, serve. uh, I mean, the synopsis alone. You got the words FBI agent, bank robbers, surfers. Like that. Those words all in one sentence. All jumbled up, but it's all in one sentence, and it all works and makes sense. And it's directed by a chick. Yes. There we go. And Cameron, I think, was involved in writing. They, yeah, because they were right. married at the time. Uncredited. Or something like that. And so uncredited rewrites. Like, her and him did the script together, but then... She... We're talking about Catherine Bigelow, for yeah. those that are Yes, un- for those of you who don't know. Catherine Bigelow of The Hurt Locker, Oscar winner, amazing director, uh, Zero Dark Thirty, everything, Drink it from my directed this movie. <laughs> and this is an incredible, like, action drama flick, and it, it wasn't... Like, nothing about it says, this is directed by a woman. It's just right. a great movie. And it happens to be directed by a wonderful woman and a very talented director. And she's a chick. It's she's written great. by Rick King and W. Peter Illith, who, W. Peter Illith, I don't know what the W stands for, Peter Illith, um, also wrote the screenplay for Patriot Games and oh. Varsity Blues. Uh-huh. Varsity Blues. 1999 Varsity Blues, right? Yeah. I think 19, so. Uh, we've already established that 1999 is the best year for it's movies. It's the best year for film. Yes. It really is. See, but the whole Phantom Menace thing. Uh, okay, well, well we you know, know, also, we're going to have missteps And the somewhere. second Austin Powers. Um, <laughs> I, saw, I saw all the other. <laughs> no, you know what else came and out? And Wild Wild West. 
Wild Wild West it. Oh, but man. And Titan AD. But, no, there's one movie that came out in 1999. You know the movie I'm going to talk about. Fight Club? Nope, not that one. It's Ten one Things of I the Hate best, About You? No, it's one of the best movies like we've movie. talked about. We had a whole podcast surrounding oh, this. Lord. The Mummy. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, okay. The did, Mummy. I'm a big I, fan I, of I The Mummy. I think I was originally supposed to do this, and I was like, I've never seen any of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's because right. we wanted you to talk about The Rock. Yeah. That's right. Um, so the budget for... This movie was twenty four million and it made eighty four million at the box office. Now I want to know. Okay, have either of you been to Point Break Live? No. no. There's a show called I, Point I, Break Live. They've tweeted at me. They tweeted uh, they've tweeted at me too. Yeah. Anytime I'll you tweet mention Point Break, yeah, any if you Which tweet is Point Break, they will tweet back at you. Yeah. Because they obviously search for Point Break the keywords. So what they do is, and I haven't been to it, but I know the structure of it. Um, and I think it's in Las Vegas and Los Angeles, they pull someone from the audience to be Johnny Utah. And oh that person reads cue cards the entire time because they want it authentic. The bad like joke Johnny is, Utah. that's what they did with Keanu. Right, right. That is and then the I made joke. that joke. <laughs> so, so I waffled. I think that's hilarious. I'm like, I want to go to that show just so I can be the I Johnny know. Utah. I know, I want to be Johnny fucking Utah. I, I want You're to. gonna be. Oh wait, I, yeah, yep. you are. Oh wait. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk oh, about later. Um, <laughs> Ruin the foreshadowing. Surprise. I like this movie because I think Bodie next to Ed Helms and The Rock are the nicest bad guys in mm-hmm. movies. They're gentle. They're gentle giants. Yeah. When was Ed? Tell me, Ed Helms. Not Ed Helms. Ed Harris. Okay. Completely was, different people. <laughs> Completely like, different. Ed Helms and The Rock. Michael Bay is The Rock. <laughs> that was. I was trying not to say. Don't say Ed Helms. Don't say Ed Helms. Ed Helms. Yep. <laughs> That happened. You know what? Matthew Broderick was originally yes. offered the role of Johnny Utah. And what? Also, yeah. I saw that. That's All as right. dumb as Annette Benning. <laughs> I know. Other people. And Johnny Depp and Charlie Sheen. And Val Kilmer. Yes, that one yeah. actually could have could have worked. That one makes that sense. One wait, Val worked. Kilmer as Johnny Utah? Yes. Yeah. So I can see Val Kilmer as a oh, terrible Bodie. I can see him as Bodie. Yeah. Wait, but Bodie, yeah. I want Val, Val Kilmer, Kilmer now to be Bodie. And yeah. he's like a really fat surfer. Like an overweight. <laughs> Matthew Broderick's <laughs> the biggest in nerd. The ocean. He's He's a big nerd. I know, but he was big in the 80s, I guess. No, I mean, the, well, they didn't kill that girl. Wait, he what? That, he got a girl killed in a car accident. That's a big deal. I didn't know this. Yeah. No, 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 no. Hold on. I don't remember that. No, Charlie Sheen. Nope. Matthew Broderick. I don't remember. I'm going to have to look I don't remember that. that. Go- Google up Matthew Broderick. I do not remember that. That's now, hold on. But Matthew was Broderick in... was in a car accident with Jennifer Grey because they used to be engaged from Dirty Dancing. And that killed that, her career. That killed her career. There Wait. we go. <laughs> then maybe that's what it is. Dirty so Dancing killed her career? Yeah, well, no. She got partially the nose job. her nose the, the job. Play, I thought she was got the, the nose yeah. job. We're going to talk about this all we'll later as well. We're like joking around. We're just teasing y'all up. All right. Where's that other trivia I wanted to Oh, also, Anthony Kiedis is in this movie. Yes. This was the time when Red Hot Chili Peppers would show up in different movies. Oh, yeah. With the guy with the long hair yep. in the um, stakeout scene or whatever. And Tom Sizemore's in that. Yep. He plays a DEA agent. And Ridley Scott was... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ridley Scott was the first choice to direct this film. Uh, that would have been pretty good. What? Tony, I could see Tony Scott doing this, but I'm yeah, like Catherine Hardwick. I could see him more than Ridley Scott. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's all I got. And just the fact that Keanu Reeves, this is the second time... Or the first time that he played an Ohio State quarterback... And the second time was the, the replacements. replacements. Yep, 2000s. Oh, I love the replacements. I saw that we super know. drunk when I was 19 years old. Really? <laughs> I got super drunk at like 2 in the afternoon. Um, and I was like, let's go see the replacements because life is forever. <laughs> hey, day drunk is the best. Day drunk movies are the best. If you want to see me talk about Point Break, you can do so on YouTube. I'm under my channel, Hit or Miss Movies, and I have a review of Point Break, and I'm in a wetsuit. So awesome. sweet. Oh, wow. There and you, you go. rented yeah. the wetsuit just for that That's video, right. correct? We had talked about this before. When I think we... so. I think you so, just told on this me podcast. Passing, maybe. You can rent wetsuit? You can, uh, from Sport Chalet. Or Sport any other sporting Chile. goods store, I'm sure, that you could we'll find that from. Deal, this podcast is brought to you by Sport Chalet, <laughs> where you can rent Let's your wettest wetsuit <laughs> from other people. <laughs> Ah, yeah, because I did. I rented them for uh, well, you don't buy scuba diving. 
Okay. So okay. When I originally got my oh, so you did rent it to do the. No, you... I did rent it to do this because oh. I knew that I could rent one because oh. I had already rented it for a scuba. Ah, okay. Oh, I got it. I was, try, I was trying to go. crawl you out, so, but you just kept digging that hole. I'll dig it. Yep. So the ending, <laughs> people are, you know, some people like to debate whether um, Bodhi escaped or whether he committed suicide or whatever. James Cameron confessed at the end of his Terminator 2 Judgment Day commentary that Bodhi killed himself at the end of Point Break. I don't think like he killed himself. Well, he died. Uh, yeah. I, think he I mean, he made the choice to, to go, go out. No, I think Bodhi thought he would take it to the limit. We'll take you to the limit no, I thought, once I don't, again. Because I don't think that's suicide. I think that's trying to trying to. Uh, Let's see if I can get out of here. Trying to make a Bodhi. Now, I'm, I'm gonna debate you on this. I it, think it's, it's reaching. The, it's like for sure suicide. See, I think it's um, he was trying to catch the ultimate. Yeah, or some other sure. catch the ulti- What's it? Catch the ultimate rush or yeah. whatever? 100 I remember the trailers. I remember the trailers for this movie. It was like, you're going to get hooked on 100% adrenaline. Because everyone was addicted to drugs then. Because um, the 90s were extreme. Everything was extreme in the 90s. So it was this was before that. This was the progenitor to all of that. This was not like 1997, like get ultimate with GAC extreme. Uh, this was... Uh, get line skating extreme. No, this was, this was 91. This was like the beginning of like alternative music and... This was a very grungy movie. Time. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, there you go. Point break. Nico, Look, what? I was 10. I had the last word. So, when this movie came out. So. I was one. Yeah. So, I don't know. I don't remember it. But I do remember watching it You later. and my wife are the same age, though. Really? 1990. Oh, cool. I yeah. didn't know she was that much younger than you. Yep. <laughs> You're a beautiful wife. Mm-hmm. You little, okay, well, just rock the cradle. Okay, yeah. Or rob it. We're not watching. We're not two. doing that movie. We're not doing Rebecca. Well, no. You know what we're doing next? Dirty Dancing. Whoa. Oh, okay. So, yeah. August so here's, here's that whole game changer uh, yes. sexism thing. Uh, this is my favorite Patrick Swayze movie. Really? Is it yeah. really? Uh-huh. Hold on. But you had a question about who was Johnny Castle, what movie he was in. I don't miss ref- that. I don't refer to people as, as their character. They're Patrick Swayze. This is just Patrick Swayze in the same movie. Okay, this was got Patrick it. Swayze. Got started it. off. And then he became the Roadhouse guy. And then yes. he was Bodie. It's all the same Patrick Swayze movie. Got it. Because I'm an infantile child. <laughs> sure. No, uh, well, look, I've done the Dirty Dancing lift at my wedding with Delara. That is awesome. Did you? Yeah. I've, Did she fall? No, I've, I've, I've... No way. My dr- You could stabilize that. Yeah. You're my, good. You're my good. drinking and upper body strength are mm-hmm. underrated. I'm okay. sure that there was other, you know people to assist if necessary did yeah. someone right. hold her feet did you guys no cheat? we did yeah we got it i mean it's really hard to do that whole thing like the lift mm-hmm. i'm lifting my hands in such a way <laughs> but um yeah no so we, we've done it before at weddings we were at a wedding last year right before we got engaged and i had bronchitis and i didn't want to go to this goddamn wedding mm-hmm. to begin with and then i had bronchitis on top of that and then, so i just sat there coughing and dying yes and then she was like hey dirty dancing come do dirty dancing song she was well. She, she doesn't normally talk like that, and so we did it. So we did the lift there too, and I was like, I just want to die. All I want to do is die, and yet we're doing this. And I'm sure it was beautiful uh, and magical and yeah. angelic. And then I think I threw up because I had bronchitis. Oh, that's unfortunate. Hopefully not on her. Hopefully not mid lift. No. Yeah, it was about to. But okay. yeah, no, I love this movie. It's um, you know, spending here's the dude the, from Law and Order. Yes, love him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I miss him. Jerry so, Orbeck. Yep. You got it. As Jake Hausman. That's his character's name. Yeah. Uh, this is about a family that goes to a holiday camp and their daughter baby falls in love with the dance instructor Johnny Castle. It's a very simple story. She is sure. from a rich, wholesome family. Jennifer He's Gray. like the poor stable boy. Right, and, it's uh, just Princess Bride. It's, it's totally Princess Bride. Uh, and they By the fall way, in love. Princess Buttercup is a terrible person. In general. Yeah. yeah. There's not much to I her. I don't like... I like the movie. What's with Robert, uh, Robin Penn playing women that just take advantage of dumb people? I don't know. Does she I, do this in I don't really Gump? follow Gump? her career. Oh, Forrest oh. Gump? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's playing those men like a fiddle. Right. Yeah. Robin Wright I had never thought about By that. By the way, her yeah. name is not... Her Ra- last name Ra- isn't Robin Penn Wright anymore. Penn, yeah. They're divorced, yes. and he has moved on to other ladies. And I don't know what she's up to, but it's Robin Wright now. She's her own woman, Nick. No, I, I apologize. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Okay, sorry. Going on. So I lost Jennifer- my points from liking Dirty Dancing more than any other Patrick Swayze movie. 
made like 215 million worldwide. Like this movie was huge. Mm-hmm. Right. The soundtrack was huge. It only cost six million. Only cost six million. It won an Oscar. It Featuring won, wait, Patrick won Swayze won singing what? on this soundtrack. Yes, That's him. It won an Oscar for "I Had the Time of My Life." Oh my gosh! I but I, I like the other song better. I like his song better. Yes. Um, wind. You wind. like the wind. She's like the wind. She's, She's like, like the wind. The wind. And uh, this mo- who directed this movie? Let me look. It was Emil Andriolino, yeah, who no. also directed Sister Act. Whoa! And oh <laughs> Three my Men God. and a Little Lady. Stacy loves Sister oh, Act. Right. I you love, love Sister, Sister Act 2 more. I love more. Sister Act 2 more because it's yes. got the better finale. And Joy Jennifer Joy Love Joy Hewitt. Father. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, every time. Every <laughs> Bringing time. in the young kids. Yeah. That's right. What? That's right. Yeah, I've never seen that one. <laughs> oh, you got no, you got to see Sister Act 2. And then they do the, uh, oh, sure. the rap. You do I, I might not see Star Wars. Like, and I'm probably not going to mm-hmm. see Star Trek. I'm, I'm seeing less movies. Um, it happens. But uh, I like, oh, by the way, just speaking of Three Men and Baby, uh, Leonard Nimoy directed that one. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, I knew that. I can tell you all Did about. he come up with the ghost of, yeah. what's in his the... face, Ted Danson, in the background? Have you guys heard yes, of this? Yes, In Three Men and a Baby, there's a ghost of Ted Danson in the background. It's not of him, though. Well, okay, here's what it's it happened. It's a person. It's Ted Danson in a cardboard person. cutout, <laughs> and it's, like, placed behind... Someone, like, put it behind a curtain It's a cardboard remember? cutout? It's a cardboard Stop cutout it. of Ted okay. Danson, I swear. So Where that's not a ghost. That's just then a... No, but when people were watching it's the movie... It's just a big head. They thought it was oh, okay. They yeah. thought it was a ghost, because they just see it in the background. Like, someone forgot to take it off ah, the set that why was day. It even there? And so it's just a legend. Well, maybe that's what they used before ghost. for lighting for stand-ins. Is, cardboard cutouts. Cardboard cutouts. There was a sketch I had to do that I ended up not doing, but I learned most of the choreography terribly for the Dirty Dancing song. Nice. So we are going to recreate that. But. Okay. The one that they learn to go over to that other hotel to perform? That yeah. one? No, the well, yeah, the um, or the, the last time. one, the last one, the last okay. one, where they, where they successfully sudden, do the lift. Yeah, yeah, where they successfully do the lift, and then he all of a sudden has all these dancers behind him that know the right. choreography. Right, that one. Well, that, like, I, I buy that. Uh, the sex scene yeah. in this movie is um, more realistic. Yeah, it's it's very it is. it's very intimate. I liked the sex scene. You know, she originally went nude, but they cut that out of the film because right. the test audiences didn't like it. Yeah, you don't want to see that. No, 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 no. I don't want to see your baby's boobs. Oh, oh, she did. Oh, yeah. like they. She went like full nude. Well, maybe not like a well, couple of they... bits down there, but just the top. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea, but they cut it out of the film because they were like, "Oh no, baby." Well, yeah, wasn't this like a wait, PG wait. movie? Hold on, guys. Val Kilmer was offered to be the lead. <laughs> wow, that would have been so tr- so much more aggressive. It, yeah. Mario dancing. Mario dancing. <laughs> Oh my and gosh. then it would have it would have gone full. She would have had like PTSD. Yeah, it would, would have gone full like Island of Doctor Moreau. He's just doing an impression of Marlon Brando the whole time. Jerry Orbach would have been right to keep Baby away from that's Delta. right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. He would have been fully justified. Although as I get older, I start finding myself relating to Jerry Orbach more in that movie right. than anyone else. Um, I saw this when I was really young, probably like maybe first grade or second grade, and. My sister was very upset. My old, my older sister, she's four years old. I have two sisters. One's four years older than me and one's eight years older than me. So when I was in first grade, the one that was just four years older was really upset that I got to see it because she wasn't allowed to see it um, because my mom was like, no, you can't see it. And she said, well, why can Brienne watch it at a friend's house? And she's like, because she's not going to understand what's happening. Yeah, no. And I feel so like... true because I had no idea that woman had an abortion. Oh, I me neither. No I, was, I wrote no, it on I, there. I feel like... The abortion situation, I didn't understand. I feel, <laughs> like, these words I feel like girls learned about sexuality. If you were Way born later. after, like, if you were alive as a woman in that mm-hmm. age, uh, Everyone learned about sexuality from that movie. And For then sure. popped it off at Titanic. For sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those are the, the bookends. It's yeah. not that I didn't understand what was happening. I knew she was pregnant and that she had an abortion. I didn't understand that it was like set what in the 60s and mm-hmm. that was illegal then. Right. I was like, well, can't she just go to like Planned Parenthood? Like, I didn't understand that it was like a huge deal and it was very dangerous. That is then. one of the weirder things. Like, this movie's set in the 60s, but it also is like, or it's just upstate New York. Like, yeah. you can never like tell. There's not that much of a difference. upstate New York. That's true. I, I mean, only the costumes. But, but it was only like, a tw- okay, so it was like in the 80s, and it like took place, what, in the 60s or the 50s? Yeah. Right. 60s. 60s. Yeah, so it was like only 20 like years. Like, that's like doing a 90s movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, oh, don't. man. 
Holy I hell. just didn't get it. I was like, why is it unsafe? She can just go to the doctor. Like I, but I, I knew it was happening, but I was just like mm-hmm. very confused about why the situation was so, you know, which like, makes upsetting. me wonder like what kind of doctor is a uh, baby's dad? Like what, what does he, I mean, I know he can I help he was her. A GP. Just general practice. Yeah. Okay. I, I got to check Those my, my fan favorites. fiction, Jerry Orbach. <laughs> hey, I got a good uh, one for call, you. Called a stern man. Uh, this film, Eyebrows. or the film was re-released in 1997 Solely due to a petition led by late night talk show host Conan O'Brien. Yep. In which he asked viewers to send letters calling for the film's re release. When exhibitors finally agreed, O'Brien joked that he actually didn't like the movie all that much. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's a great that abuse funny. of power right there. Just uh, should we well, release this movie? Conan's a wonderful, wonderful man. He is. Yes, you know him. I do. You're friends. You, you're on his show sometimes, correct? Yes, I am. Uh, well, he knows, yeah, he, he likes, but he likes Delar a lot more. Delar. My wife's an animator, mm-hmm. and he he said her name to the audience when he introduced a clip she did. Still, oh, wow. Yeah, so, but awesome. me, was, uh, there was that guy. No, I mean. <laughs> the guy that yells yeah. and falls. Well, sometimes. pretty women, another yeah. guy. Well, she's more talented than that. <laughs> this, I mean, that's <laughs> every woman, she quite It's so. different. That's inherently every woman. Come Areas on. of talent. Get, I, I know we're talking about dirty dancing, but okay, get, okay, like, okay, it's because yeah. talent, Jerry, <laughs> or back. <laughs> Get out of your 60s mindset. So at the time, Patrick Swayze was offered $6 million to reprise the role and do a sequel, like when it first like released, and yeah. he said no. He was like, I'm not doing it. But well, he like, was in Dirty Dancing Havana Nights. But mm-hmm. right away, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, like yeah. that's a, that, that was great about then. Like, there weren't wait, a lot of sequels. Yeah, which is awesome, because like, right now we'd probably have, like a, if these movies came out, we'd probably have like a Point Break shared universe, Dirty Dancing oh, yeah. like prequel. We'd all be dead. Bodhi didn't commit suicide. He actually escaped and started a dance studio in no. Bells Beach, Australia. And that is where Dirty Dancing Havana. Australia. No, if Australia. Point Break, if point break came out one. now, it would be the Fast and the Furious franchise. It would be. It would. Yeah. It is the same thing. Oh, show. But it's a, you know. They all created they the, the Fast rock. and the Furious franchise. It has that same formula. We've already talked about Point Break, guys. Oh, We're God. talking about Dirty Dancing. Okay. Well, I'm done for Dirty Dancing. It's, it's so. a great movie. It's, I love the movie. I think we can close it up. What about you? I have one more piece of yeah, trivia that I just it. want to talk about. Well, I have like 17 pieces of trivia. But <laughs> the very famous scene where Johnny and Baby are practicing their dancing and they're crawling towards each other on the floor wasn't intended to be part of the film. They were just kind of messing around and warming up to do the real scene. But the director liked it, thought it was cute, so he kept it in. So Good choice. Good yeah, choice. Like, yeah, that was totally worth it, it what like, I just said. He was busy on his phone with his agent. Who was trying to convince him to do three men and a little lady? <laughs> like, I don't know. Sounds like a bad idea. No, nah, you got this. No, nah, you got Dancing dirty dancing and this movie. It'll be a perfect one-two combo. <laughs> it will in no way kill your career. All right. Wait. Why are they? Why are they crawling? Roll. Roll film. Oh, one more. Okay. Yeah. Billy yeah. Zane and yes. Sarah Jessica Parker auditioned for this. Oh, that would have been the worst. But Billy Zane, I secretly love him. Well, still, Billy Zane wouldn't. I mean, I think he would be all right. I think he'd be okay. That would be a but terrible he can't dance, But oh yeah, he couldn't dance. That's, That's why right. they said no. And Sharon Stone auditioned for Baby Two. I love That's... it when people audition for things they can't do. Hey, yeah. Like, facts. hey, I'm Billy Zane. I can't dance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna audition though. Yeah. Well, hey, there's I can't tons play, of people. I that... can't play a bass guitar, but guess what? On my resume, it says I can play bass. There guitar. you go. There are tons of people that tried it. out to be mm-hmm. songgirls when I tried out, and so many of them had no clue how to dance. And I was like, I don't know why you came to Because I think you were going to sing. The name's stupid. <laughs> I guess. Anyways. The I second day of auditions, girls. there was like a, a clearing of people that were now, like, oh. Now, at USC, there's song girls and then also cheerleaders? No, just song girls. Oh, okay. They have a yell squad now. They used to have the yell leaders, which were uh, an all-male squad. Oh. We have yell leaders. And then they had Oh, uh, yeah. Well, squad. you have a cult. Well, uh... <laughs> I, you, you I have will, a militarized I will cult. fully admit to this. Yes. Texas A&M, my school, I am an Aggie. Giggum, whoop, is kind of cultish. And okay. it's just okay. what it is. Because College Station has nothing else. This is true. This is true. USC is at least town. just, it's the ninth most important thing in their life. <laughs> Besides their ego. Sorry, I'm just ripping on your college. How dare you? you really hard How dare you? I'm so offended. All right, so from there, we've Matt done. Matt too. I was sitting at Chili's. <laughs> I'm going to go look for him. Although it doesn't matter. I see him at the gym, and then I just, yeah. like, stare at him the whole time. I'm like, why am I doing this? What? <laughs> what? I shouldn't be doing that. Anyways. All right, so we did Secrets Roadhouse. Secrets of my life. <laughs> we did Roadhouse. From there, we did two Patrick Swayze movies. Yeah. One Point Break, one Dirty Dancing. From Point Break, 
What two movies have you brought for us, Nick? Just tell us one. Just tell okay. us one for now. And what's the theme? What's the theme? Uh, Tank Girl. Tank Girl is a theme. Okay, so Lori no, Petty movies? No, Lori Petty movies. Ah, okay. Okay. Because Tank Girl's garbage, and it was like an excess of the six, uh, of the 90s uh-huh. bullshit comic book Judge Dredd terrible movies. Right. But they're all terrible. Um, but I also get to want to talk about one of my favorite movies, uh, A League of Their Own. Oh! Yes. Yeah. I love A League of Their Own. Yeah. Nice. So that's all right. what I, I still watch that movie all the time. It's one of the best sports movies. It's a, it is one of the best sports Gina movies. Gina Davis is awesome. It's hilarious. It is. Tom Hanks is... It might be my favorite Tom Hanks performance outside of Money Pit and The Burbs. There's uh, no crying yes. in baseball. I like, I like funny Tom Hanks. I miss funny Tom Hanks. Yeah. My uh, favorite line is, you know, the train moves, not the station. That's yeah. probably mine. <laughs> oh, John Lovett should have got, like, nominated for an Oscar in that movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, Tank Girl sucks. Okay. But you, like, but you like Lori Petty. Is that the... I like A Few Good Men, and I got to talk about that movie. Uh-huh. Because I want to talk about that movie. Okay. So, but I used Lori Petty as a okay. gateway drug. What would have been for? Uh, um, because I don't know other any other two men. movies. Who else is in a few good men? Uh, from Point Break. No one is oh. it. But you. <laughs> did I? We gotta did I break out. it? No, I'm just trying to figure it out. I can usually I can figure out okay. how can you talk about this and that I off no of Point point Break. No, but he picked his two movies, though. He did good. Yes, you got he it correct. Good. Okay. I'm just saying, if you oh, want to talk just... a few good men, how could I link that? So oh, that no, not a few good like, men. A, a, a League of Their Own. A League of Their Own. But are we trying okay, to talk okay, about a few yeah. good men? No. <laughs> we can talk about anything you want but to. But you know what? No, let's talk about the two. Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, okay did so you guys ever see Tank Girl? Okay, I haven't. I've seen nope. clips of it. I watched a YouTube video bashing Tank Girl. Yeah. My husband likes Tank Girl. So, Isn't it like... the DVD. I watched it like 20 minutes. I was like, nope. It's like based Take off this of back to what happens. a comic book, right? Yeah. It, she has a tank, and she's okay. a girl. And it's like, I think that's it's as far like as for Tank girl. Yeah. It's like Mad Max, but stupid, right? Like, not awesome. Yeah. And, lame. It, and it has weird jokes, and, like, it doesn't have any action in it. They just have, they literally just put up the pictures of the comic. Yeah. And they're I, like, this is what's supposed to be happening, rather than filming what's supposed to be happening. Talked enough about Tank Girl. Okay. Let's just talk about Penny Marshall's epic a few, uh, League of Their Own. A League of Their Own. Let's do it. With Gary Marshall, Gina Davis, Madonna. It's Rosie O'Donnell. Rosie O'Donnell. Wait, Gary Marshall. What plays was the this? owner. Okay. Of the Rockford Peaches. Nice. I, I, love, I love that outfit. I need to do that for Halloween sometime. I want to do that because it's a cute outfit. It is. It and is. The, uh, I, my, one of my favorite scenes is it's when they're practical. like, we can't wear no, that. No. And then they yes. slide and she like reveals her wound. Yes. It's so disgusting. And I had a dream about that one time i was like a professional baseball player and i was like i can't play like this and i had this like gross bruise but i was still a badass and i like fought through the pain and won the game in the world series and whatever they play in this what's the world series championship something like world that series. world series like the, the yeah. one time they ever did it for right one. all right we're back okay oh, and, yeah. we're back. and we're back we have to take a short right. little break guys. no uh no i i just this is my of all these movies I, I think a league of the world is my favorite. Is, is that weird? No, I like. And it. it has my favorite Madonna song. Um, this used to be, be my playground. playground. This used to, which I sung on Monday Night Raw. In a Childhood dreams. Yeah, this is, I don't remember. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna audition for Monday Night Raw right now. Is that in the I'm credits? Kidding. When is that song? Yeah, it's in the credits. Oh, oh I missed that. All I know is we are the members of the, the All American Team from the cities. Near and far, we are Canadians, Canadians. Woo! Irish and some Swedes. We're all, we're one, we're one for all, we're all Americans. Good job. That was fun. And then it goes again. Right? Like, to another, another. It's not a very good song, but it, they did it. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, we got you it. You liked that we sang has, that. has one of the best keys <laughs> in uh, movies. It does, the longest, probably. Yes. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's just, Gina Davis is awesome, and I wish she did more things. Now, you know, she's literally a genius, right? Yes. Like, her IQ right. is genius level, and she started the Gina Davis Foundation for equality in film. And I have right. a feeling Lori Petty's that stupid. <laughs> Could be. I have Could a feeling be. I don't know. both things are accurate portrayals. <laughs> where is Lori Petty? Where'd she's she go? She's the sister, sister. She's of Gina kid. Davis. No, 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 no. Oh, I where is she today? now? Where she's in she? uh, Orange is the New Black. Is she? Mm, yep. Nice. Wait, what does she play? I don't watch that well, show. Well, a jail 
member. A jail member? A prison inmate? Okay. Here's what I like about A League of Their Own um, in terms of character development. I like that Tom Hanks and Gina Davis are like, like have a real good camaraderie between yeah. each other, yeah. but They're it equal. never They're is equal. like romantic. No. no. At any no, 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 no. time. But they're like really good friends it's and they go well together. Well, because she's respect. married to Bill Pullman, war hero. Right. That's right. And no one would step on that. Or Bill Paxton. Which is nice. Wait, does it, one they're of the two. I always forget. No, Bill Paxton. I, I, see, I never get that because Bill Paxton's an unhinged, crazy psychopath. <laughs> and and Bill Pullman's the president. Just the name. Just the name. Yeah. And Pullman the, is like president. Jeff Bridges is... and Jeff Daniels. Yeah, I like to play uh, Treat Williams or Tom Berenger. <laughs> No. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. What? No idea. You never saw <laughs> no. Um, but no, I think that I love this movie. I wish Patrick Swayze was in it. Just I think his spirit is. Like, spirit. It's Ghost Patrick. Penny Marshall got all these people together. Like, let's do this for Patrick. Let's just do this. He wasn't what would dead he be? Yet, what, would his, what would his role be? One handsome, of the guys in the Suds bar. Guy. He's the one who. Uh, he's a guy when they go to the bar, get drunk. The he's, yeah, he's the one mm-hmm. who's like, keep it cool. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, that's one of my favorite moments in the movie is when the shy, quote unquote, ugly girl actually oh, right. meets a handsome, nice man. No, he wasn't handsome. Well, he, he was wasn't a, handsome, he was but he was too. sweet. He was uggos, but they were <laughs> uggos together, and they fell in love. And mm-hmm. she broke out of her shell and sang to him, and then left the baseball team and yeah. abandoned them in the minute of a pennant that race. That is unfortunate. Because she chose a man over can, her career. Women can that was only the be po- in Oh my the god, kitchen. this is a terrible movie. <laughs> this is a terrible Already. This is Already. a horrible lesson. She married a guy, the first guy who gave her googly eyes, and then abandoned her comrades in the middle of a season. So we have one girl that sucks, but god, everyone else the, Oh god damn it. And also Gina Davis lost on purpose. Right. No. No, 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 no. Yeah. Gina Davis oh, dropped that baseball movie. on purpose. Fuck <laughs> this movie. This moments. goddamn piece of shit. It's it terrible. It went from your favorite film, film? to your least oh, favorite film. Oh, mother. I'm glad we could do this today, Jesus guys. Christ. Yay. Yeah. Well, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for ruining this memory, you uh, dicks. I also like at the end when they're at the Hall of Fame and then the, oh. the boy goes to his mom's picture. Yeah. Oh. That was well, she sucked because she can hit off the relay. Yeah. Ah, Betty Spaghetti. She, right? Oh, now she was in Monk. She played yes, that show, TV show first. Monk. She's his assistant. The first you guys one. have great movie taste and terrible TV taste. Well, I haven't well, seen Monk. In, <laughs> I don't watch. I TV used to watch like TNT all the time, but it's it's developed into Netflix original shows and HBO Go a lot. Okay. So mm-hmm. you know, I, I've evolved past. I don't have cable, so you know, right? That's that's what's As, happening there. Uh, I don't know. But either. um, Who does no, she was on Monk, and then there's a ton of like famous people in this movie that like went on to do. Other things. things. The Other girl things. who was the evil leaper in Quantum Leap is in this, mm-hmm. which we don't need to talk about. The anyway. evil leaper. Yeah. Uh, no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. No, what's Quantum should... Leap? Uh, what? what? Oh. Wait, wait. Well, no. What's this? Quantum Leap was a show on NBC with Scott oh, Bakula where he would leap into other people's lives and then was try this to in pick the 80s something. or the 90s. Nine, nine, Both. It's like yeah. a crossover, like early 90s. Yeah. Oh, and I feel like I've heard of it, but mm-hmm. I've never seen it. Like, it's, I've heard of other amazing. shows it's like Small Wonder, where the little well, girls are well, this robot, is, this is a robot, but different. I've never seen it. This saying. is completely different. Okay. But... No, I feel like they're the same. Or did they, did they I feel like you not episode? being the Small Wonder robot's a missed Halloween opportunity. <laughs> I totally could be Small Wonder. Nobody my age would know what was going on. And I'd be like, you've never seen this sh-? Like, look at them like I'm God such a hipster, you idiots. God damn you can just go to Kamikaze as that and people For would be sure. like, For sure. Everyone would know. It would be great. They would. I know the theme song. She's a small I don't, wonder. I don't know that theme song. We have sang so much on this episode. It's, it's a good Why? singing one. It's, a, it's the singing one. It's the sing-along episode. Yes. We're in the Christmas Yay. spirit, in theory. So theory. yeah, a league of their own, guys. Yeah, that's how. We love it. We hate it. Tank girl, hate it. Horseshit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll, there we I'll go. listen. Now off of our link, so we went from Dirty Dancing, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so our link from Dirty Dancing is actors or actresses that have fallen off the grid the grid says well that's what i did i followed that theme too with Lori petty <laughs> good job <laughs> you hey, did. We're all hey, it's, oh, it's all connecting goodness. now yeah. all connecting so why don't you go first sure uh, i will go here. first um i chose the sandlot april 7th 1993 another baseball movie yeah. another baseball film Whoa. we've got it uh, a new kid in town is taken under the wing of a young baseball prodigy and his team and together they get themselves into many adventures involving rival teens teams lifeguards and a vicious dog 
And can you remind me of the name of the actor that fell off the I grid? I will. I will. Okay. So Scotty Smalls is p- played by Tom Gurry. He's like the main character. Mike Vitar, which is the one that fell off the grid, uh, plays Benny the Jet Rodriguez. We also have Dennis Leary, Karen Allen, Patrick Rena, Chauncey Lombardi, Marty York, Brandon Quinton Adams, Grant Gelt, James Earl Jones, and Marley Shelton. Um, this is written and directed by David M. Evans, who also directed Radio Flyer, uncredited, and Beethoven's second and third. Wait, he directed it? I Sandwich. thought Donner directed it. He's an uncredited director, so I'm guessing, like... He got fired. Something. Are they in something multiple happened. ones and you can only pick one? Or something? I don't know. Who knows? No clue. Because Richard Donner is the main, you know, yeah. guy there, so he's probably like, talk we, to Elijah we can sweep about it. this brought... under the rug. <laughs> Who is this guy? Uh, the budget was $7 million and it made $33 million. Um, so here's what I know about Mike Vitar. So Mike Vitar did this film. This was kind of his breakout role. Then he went on to do uh, D2, The Mighty Ducks, and D3. Um, and that was pretty much it. Then he was like, all right, I'm done with acting. Thanks. I'm going to go be a firefighter. Good does he still ya. look good? He does. Oh, I'm not, is he on Twitter? He is not. He doesn't do that sort of social media. So I do know him personally. Oh, okay. Um, And when I met him, it was like back back in the day. It must have been like, I don't know, uh, early 2000s, 2005 maybe. So I saw my friend on an airplane, and she was with this man. And she was like, oh, this is Mike. And I was like, oh, hey, you know. And she's like, oh, you know. And we all sat together, and I was talking to both of them. And I was like, so what do you do, Mike? And he's like, oh, I'm a firefighter in L.A. and whatever. And I was like, cool, you know, like, awesome. Your first. And then in my head, I was like, I wonder if he knows Mike Vitar. Like, in my head, thinking that. Because, you know, like, I know the Sandlot, and I follow movies. And oh, okay. I was like, I knew that Mike Vitar left to do firefighting. and So you knew what Mike Vitar was. But I but couldn't you didn't realize put it the together. Man you were putting to- yes. Okay, that's, that's weird. Have that you is weird. Talked with him about. I've talked. The Sandlot. No. And, no. No. So I've seen them, you know, plenty of times, and no, I don't bring that up. Oh, I would totally. I'd be like, oh my god, you're in the Sandlot. Whoa, you play ball like a girl. What? <laughs> like I would be so all over it and annoying. So yeah, so he doesn't do anything else. Although he, I have one insider thing that I could tell you that oh. like I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like, oh, I'm stepping on some bounds here, but um. He did consider, like, for a moment, like, oh, Rescue Me looks like a pretty good show, and Dennis Leary's on it. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe a little, maybe a little thought, like, oh, I could do that. But I don't think there was anything that went beyond, like, I think this would be cool. Yep. <laughs> so that's that That would have been awesome. Um, but I do love The Sandlot, just in general. Yeah. The one thing I don't like, I really wish they would have cut out the puking scene, because I, I cannot stand that. Uh, I dipped on Monday Night Raw in a practice episode uh, because I'm a child. Sure. And it dipped it was weird. But I don't, I just didn't like puking. Fair like, enough. sure, if they're going to do that, whatever. And I get, but they're on a ride and I'm like, no. Well, we're talking baseball stop. movies too of, of 90s youth. So yeah. I did a better job than I thought. <laughs> Good job. I'm Rollins. glad we came together on this. Yeah. And uh, in this film, the younger and older Benny are related, so his older brother was the one that played the older version of him. Oh, okay, that's fun. Oh, cool. Because I, I was just thinking, cool. that, that dude didn't turn out to be that handsome. I'm sure Mike Vitar is probably a more handsome. He had a mustache. He, he like did. A, he had like a thick mustache. Yes, because uh. that was like the time, right? No. No? It was like Early 90s? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess he would have yeah, been more no, in the Yeah, but no, the Sandlot player. was set in the 60s, right? So then if it would have sure. been it was like a time 10 hole. to 15 time later. Hole. Maybe 70s. He would, time have, he would have had a 70s porn stash for sure. They did it right. Okay. They did it right, you guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from, now you did one movie where the actor fell off the grid. Mine is going to be 16 Candles. Yes. Yes. So excited. Okay. So synopsis. <laughs> a young girl's sweet 16th birthday becomes anything but special as she suffers from every embarrassment possible. It's got 80s queen Molly Ringwald. Anthony Michael Hall, John Cusack is in it. He plays like geek number one. He doesn't even have a yep. name. Uh, and Michael Schofling. Shuffling? Schofling. Schofling. There we go. Uh, now he plays Jake Ryan, and he's the one that has fallen off the grid. Right. And is now just makes furniture in Pennsylvania. Yeah. He it's was like a, a similar fashion yeah. to uh, Mike Vitar. He Beatard. just decided to leave the industry. You know him, him too, and without realizing. I don't know okay. him. I wish I did. Uh, <laughs> Because he was in Vision Quest, Mermaids, and then Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken was like his last 
his yeah. last film. Which I love. Was, Wild Hearts can't be broken. Have you seen that movie? I've not. Okay, I've that's, never heard that's of one of my. Or I saw it on right. IMDb, but I was like, "What is this?" This is that. It's it's a favorite. It's like about this girl that's like a horse diver, and then she a like what? has an accident. Oh, She's I remember like, hearing say previews for that movie. Yeah, it's what like is a horse diver? um. So when you would go to the circus or something, there would be like a horse, and it would go up this ramp, and then a girl would latch on to the horse at the top, and then they would dive into a um, tank together. Oh my god, this sounds horrifying. So, Wait, what? Yeah. So that was form of entertainment in the circus oh my and then gosh. they she has an accident and then oh, no. he helps her he's in love with her from the beginning and then he helps her through the accident and then oh, how no. are we going to overcome like is she going to be a blind horse diver who knows what's going to happen like, i'm are getting we gonna do choked this? up just listening to this <laughs> so there you go that's a far more interesting movie than 16 count no i'm just kidding I hey guys we have all this extra money let's make a movie about a stupid thing <laughs> hey now a random hey. horse diving thing never heard of that i movie. like that movie Okay, um, so he was a model before this. Both him right? and his wife are models. Well, he did, the, yeah, because he's gorgeous. <laughs> Come on. Uh, he auditioned for this movie, and at first he was, like, way too shy, and they were like, we can't use him. But then the casting director was like, guys, look at him. He's the most gorgeous, dreamy guy ever. He's absolutely Sure, he delayed. might not be able to act. He yeah. may not but be But you able know to what? Act. He's so good looking. That's sure. like every That's all you woman need, ever. in any movie, all right? All you need ever. And so. That's um, all you need. <laughs> All you need in life. Uh, so yeah, so You're then they both just message. left. They both just left the industry, and he like makes furniture. He's like mm-hmm. a successful. Because yeah. he was a bad driver. actor. Who <laughs> so was peer pressured into doing it? Probably. You know who else was a woodworker? Harrison Ford. You guys thought I was gonna say Jesus, didn't you? No. <laughs> no. Harrison Ford. No, I actually thought Harrison Ford. Uh, so I love that Molly Ringwald. Like originally, it was supposed to be Ali Sheedy. Oh yeah, and then they. But then she did a short circuit. And she was through like, why did I do away. this? But then uh, afterwards, they starred in Breakfast Club together. And Jim so. Carrey was auditioned for The Geek. That's right. Which would have been interesting. Which would have probably been the same thing. Probably. Mm-hmm. You're right, actually. You're not gonna, I don't think he's going to talk through his ass as a glorified extra role. He would have just sat up in the car in the auto shop. And can Vigo, I have some of your underwear? Wait a no, minute. No, can I borrow your underwear for 10 minutes? Vigo Mortensen as Jake Ryan also. That's right. Oh, God damn it. That would have been intense. <laughs> that would, oh, like Eastern Promises. He had just like tattoos everywhere. Uh, and John Hughes directorial debut. There's That's all the trivia I've got for yeah. you about this movie. That's the same trivia that I got. Whoa, did we both read IMDb what? trivia section for Holy the movie? Holy moly. Oh, shit. Okay. I love prepping. Love this. <laughs> Clearly, no, I did. I'd have a synopsis. Take girl suck. Baseball, girl baseball movie good. Girl baseball. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Uh, it made. We like, can call it caveman reviews. <laughs> that actually Take girl really suck. Good. And baseball and skirts. <laughs> they're in skirts. Good. Um, it made twenty five mil domestically, so it did. It, I it's not always it, about the money. I know, but it's, it's a, not. a factoid I have That's on my so sheet. That's so true. So I'm gonna read it's it. not. And it's not always about the Oscars either. That's right. I saw it first it's when about, I was... It's about putting pretty people that can't act into <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Who eventually... Rule number friends. one, are they good looking? Which is that whole thing, that viral um, Meryl Streep photo that's going around about a picture of her, like, right after she way. auditioned for some movie and someone told for her she King was Kong. too ugly. Yeah, King Kong. And they said, mm-hmm. you're too ugly for this role. And she's like, well, I'm going to go find someone that's kinder. You're just a one person in a sea of many other producers and directors and yeah and she hasn't done anything since <laughs> i know no. who's heard Where's from she? her well, i should have done she her was for a death becomes the her. Grid. <laughs> death becomes her <laughs> is Brisbane. actually a brilliant film oh, i love that, that movie it's intense. wait is that Gold, goldie hawn right? goldie hawn I, i'm always like Meryl goldie Street. hawn or shelly long like for some reason it's always goldie hawn yes it's always goldie hawn goldie hawn goldie hawn's great where is she last thing i saw her in hey, was, Carol um, Russell. yeah that's right yeah they're totally still together and I, last thing Good I saw her in was The Banger Sisters, which she was hot in that, too. You saw her butt, and she still looked good. She was, like, 60-something, and she pulled on some Maybe a butt pants. double. First no, Wives no, no, Club. No. That's the last Club. thing I remember her in. All right, so that, that concludes our, our podcast, this but we have a few of, things. Oh, we have a few you, things yes. before we, before oh, we close yeah. it out. First, uh, yeah. we do uh, movie link tweets, which basically we tweet out off of our first link. To see what other people have to say. So I said, what is your favorite Patrick Swayze movie? And here's what we got back. Kyle Graves says Red Dawn. April Dawn says Donnie Darko. Josh Bloom, Ghost. Jack Shipley and The Kill Chair said Point Break. Kurt Milner and Ashley Alexander say Roadhouse. Anthony Tobias, The Outsiders, and Roger Barr says Point Break, Roadhouse, and The Renegades TV. The Outsiders is a terrible movie. 
idiot. Wait, I love that book though. Well, yeah, it does. Take all. The one with Tom Cruise, well, like pre. Yeah, the movie's pre-smile, terrible. Pre-smile, pre-braces. Francis Ford Coppola is a shitty director. He directed now, The Godfather. Yeah, well, and he's. He also the, directed Twix. And he hasn't don't done watch shit Twix. since it's Godfather Two. <laughs> all right, and the your other wine thing. Sucks. So that's one thing we do, the movie link tweets. Thanks, guys. And then we also have, would the movie be better with Rocky in it? Okay. Sylvester Stallone as Rocky in a movie. Yes. So Would it be better? First, well, normally we do would do Roadhouse, which was our feature film, but we decided to do Point Break today. It's got better lines. So let's explain to Nick where this um, manifested from. Okay. We did a which podcast. Rocky? Rocky one. One. Okay. We so did a podcast like, about careful Rocky. careful with women's cancer. <laughs> We thought love the zoo. That's no every time. Every time. Every time. That's um, your go-to. I'm shocked. That movie. I watched it for the first time several weeks ago to ah, yes. do a podcast, and I was shocked by the amount of political incorrectness, which I've now been told is just Boston. Like that's just how it is. Philly. Philly. Ah oh, shit. Wrong city. It's still the East Continue. Coast. Continue. Continuing. Sorry. <laughs> um. And so I was like trying to do a really really poor Rocky impression. So. Now we've started to do. Now movies. it's just our running gag. Okay, yeah. it's our yeah. running gag. Yeah. So Stacy's gonna I'm, be Rocky. So I'm gonna be really? Rocky. So, Why is it this the whole podcast? <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I you think... listen to the one that's coming up, you bubbly, will see. Bubbly, bubbly redhead girl does Rocky impression. <laughs> <laughs> Episode three. Perfect. So we are gonna read a scene from Point Break. I will be Johnny Utah as Rocky. Nick, you're gonna be Bodie. Yes. And I have your... I don't have a Patrick Swayze impression, so... I'll no, no, no. You, you can just do it however you want. Okay. Cody. It doesn't matter. So I and I'm going to be the last two a-holes in this. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, his name's Grom. <laughs> Grom. Nathaniel. Nathaniel. I'm going to be both of them. Okay. All right. Yeah, good job. All right. Uh, take it away. Professional actor, Nick Monday. Oh, God. That's a lot of pressure. 90 seconds, Johnny. That's all I ask for. Just 90 seconds of your life, Johnny. That's it. This is our tactic. We strike fear. Once we get them peeing down the leg, they submit. Also about fear... Fear causes hesitation. And hesitation causes your worst fears to come true. I can't do this. Jesus. <laughs> Just keep going. Yes. Yes, you can. Who knows? You might like it. Bodie, yo, this is your fucking wake up call, man. Yo, I am an FBI agent. <sighs> yeah, I know, man. <laughs> Ain't it wild? That's what makes it so interesting. You do whatever you want. Make up your own rules. Why be a servant to a, the, why be a servant to the law when you could be its master? Fucking a. I love this job. And scene. Nice. Go. Good job. Wow. Wow. That was a thing that <laughs> Rocky. happened in the world. It happened. Utah. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is. We've just started is, doing for, scenes for such a straight podcast, and it's very good and very informative. That's the most batshit insane I've ever heard in a podcast. <laughs> it's like it, it's insane. That's great. Okay, that's fantastic. I'm glad. I'm glad. I think I did a good job. It's something to remember. Well, no, it's you did it, but it was fantastic. <laughs> and our last thing, and then we say our goodbyes oh, at the very bottom. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thank you You're for welcome. coming Thanks on. Thanks for coming this on. Fun, that was a course. blast. I'm glad we're just watched Star Wars and we're getting ready I for know. the Christmas. Let's spoil Yay. everything. Every Hopefully Christmas. the war on Christmas this year is really good. <laughs> oh, it started off pretty it's well. It started off really good. It started good. off with a bang. Uh, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's amazing. Okay, so next, so the last thing, we're going to link all these movies to Kevin Bacon. Not all of them. Or just no, Roadhouse. to Roadhouse. Yeah. Kevin Bacon was in My Dog Skip with Diane Lane, who was in The Outsiders with Patrick Swayze, who was in Roadhouse. And we all know Nick loves The Outsiders, so. No, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> Loves it. Bullshit. Where can we find you, Nick? Uh, I'm on the internet with Dick Fundy for Twitter and Instagram. and Just leave me alone on Facebook. That's, okay. That's for, stay off my Facebook. Stay off that's it. If you, want, if, if you want my political rantings. Which you How want. about uh, your show? Oh, and then Monday Night Raw on Screen Junkies Plus. Sign up or it's still free right now. Uh, you know, it's a lot of good times. It's Monday, 4 o'clock Pacific, and then you figure out the time zones from there. Okay. And, uh, we yeah, can do math. Yeah. We're good at math. Stacey? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SOHoward2012. And I write for Smoe's No. And I do horror flicks with my buddies, Coster and Cody. I do horror flicks and kill recommendations. So, yeah, there we go. Nice. 
You can find me on Twitter at Miss Movies every goddamn day on Twitter. And you can also find me on Instagram if you want, which is Miss underscore Movies. But it's just a lot of, it, I mean, you will see my life, people. Yeah. It's people. the highlights. It's the highlights. But you will see I, what I, my I, life I is I hate about. that thing where you're obviously posting a picture of your niece coloring a picture. Like, yeah. oh, what do you think of like Voltron? <laughs> what do you... <laughs> That's my impression of the people. They bark at you it's like just, a dog. It's like, hey, uh, here's a picture of my wife's hand holding the engagement. Why did I get all drawn into the dog? Oh, because people are like asking you yes. about like movie what? stuff. What did I do? Why did I do? Here's a picture of my like house I grew up in. What did I do? Why did I do? Stay on topic, people. Stay on topic. Monster. All right. Well, thank you very much. Keep following me. Yay! <laughs> so I can belittle and mistreat you. I had a good time. I had, I had a great fun. time. This is a weird, fun thing you guys do. I'm thank glad. You. Thank yeah. you. So we'll see you guys uh, later. Next time. I guess For Christmas. Next time. Yeah. Ha- Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Holidays. Happy Star Wars. Happy Clone Star. Happy Boxing Day. Uh, it's going to be Happy hilarious. Hanukkah. It sucks and there's riots and we're just like doing this a- <laughs> acronistic thing that's like, uh, the world's still together. <laughs> we did it. We made apart. it. Good job. All right. All right. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Okay. Bye. Bye. Hit the button. Bye. Hit the button. Bye. Hit the button. Bye. Bye. Six Degrees of Feature Film is produced by Stacy Howard and me. Special thank you to Ken Knapsack for our intro and Matt Brown for our artwork. 